Hello everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am starting with the lecture number thirteen on the series of lectures on the asphyxial deaths. And in this lecture, the learning objectives will be that I will be starting my discussion on drowning. And the learning objectives. of this video lecture will be that i will discuss its introduction of the drowning its definition and classification which is typical drowning which is also called as wet drowning and atypical drowning which is dry drowning immersion syndrome submersion of unconscious and near drowning so these are four types of atypical drowning then i will be discussing in this lecture atypical types of drowning in detail one by one so just a going through all the types of asphyxial deaths we have discussed this is a picture showing the various levels of interference leading to mechanical asphyxial deaths the slightest is the lower most pressure on the carotid sinus or carotid bodies then compression of the trachea or suffocation drowning traumatic asphyxia strangulation and hanging so all these types we have discussed just a diagram showing the various types now starting with the topic of drowning regarding its introduction drowning is due to impairment entry of water and impairment as result of being in or under the liquid so drowning is due to interference with respiratory process or respiratory impairment as result of being in or under a liquid and air is replaced by water that is the air in the lungs is replaced by water no air is not available for the process of respiration so the process of respiration is interfered with by the presence of water in the lungs and drowning is very painful once a person is under water the average person has between 30 to 60 seconds to run out of it that means the air which is present in the lungs he or she will run out of that air in 30 to 60 seconds before they are unintentionally they will breathe water then because the air will be then replaced with water and they will inhale water instead of air and this will hurt a lot and the person is likely to go unconscious soon after this so drowning typically occurs silently with only a few people able to wave their hands or call for help person is swimming but is sinking down raising his hand symptoms following rescue may include breathing problems vomiting confusion unconsciousness that is even if you rescue the person the symptoms may even follow because he has inhaled water 
which has now entered into the circulation or gone into the stomach, which may lead to these problems. And the person starts sinking, same person, and going down by raising his hand. So drowning is, by definition, drowning is a form of asphyxial death in which the access of air to the lungs is prevented by submersion of body in water or any other fluid medium. So drowning is an asphyxial death. Young children are especially at risk and they can drown in less than two inches or six centimeters of water even. That means drowning can happen where you would least expect it. It can happen in a sink, the toilet bowl, fountains, buckets, inflatable pools, or small bodies standing, small bodies having the standing water around your home such as ditches filled with rainwater. So these places are unexpected. But the small children can drown themselves in these unnoticed places. Complete submersion is not necessary. Only the sufficient water or fluid which covers the nostrils and the mouth that is required. For example, any unconscious person with head injury falling in very shallow, shallow water with prone at the face facing downward. Similarly, the epileptics and the alcoholic, when they fall prone, they submerge their face into very shallow water and undergo drowning that they inhale water and in the lungs, the air is replaced by water and the process of respiration is interfered and drowning starts. Now the drowning medium. Usually and most commonly it is water, like in the lakes, river and sea. So in all these types, basically there are two types of water, the fresh water, and the salt water. And the process of death in both medium, that is fresh water and salt water is different. Then other substances may be there, for example, oil, dyes, or any other chemical substance in which the person may fall and get drowned. So regarding the classification of drowning, the first is the typical drowning. It indicates obstruction of the air passages and the lungs by inhalation of fluid and it is known as wet drowning also. So the typical drowning where actually the water or the fluid enters into the lungs, the medium is inhaled and that is why it is called as wet drowning. Then the atypical drowning, in these, the conditions are such that in which there is very little or even no inhalation of water into the respiratory passages. And these atypical condition can be dry drowning, immersion syndrome, which is also called as vagal inhibition, submersion of the unconscious. So none of these atypical signs of drowning at autopsy will be found in submersion of unconscious because the person has already been unconscious and no typical signs of drowning will be seen. 
And the fourth type of atypical drowning is near drowning. This is also called as secondary drowning syndrome. And it usually happens in those persons which get survived, they are rescued from drowning. But later on, because of the complications, they die. So that's why it is called as secondary drowning syndrome or near drowning. Now the atypical drowning, I will discuss each type in detail. Regarding the dry drowning, about 20% of the submersion deaths are due to dry drowning. Dry means water doesn't enter into the respiratory passages. As soon as the water enters the nasopharynx or larynx, it triggers intense laryngeal spasm and it prevents the entry of water deeper down into the lungs. So just by entry of water and touching the nasopharynx or the larynx initiates an intense spasm of the larynx. Little or no water enters the lungs and death occurs from asphyxia because the laryngeal spasm is so intense that it will not be released and it will prevent air entry also and the person will die from asphyxia. And this is the best case for resuscitation, that if someone is rescued and the, res the resuscitative attempt should be continued, this is a standard instruction, should be continued for at least half an hour. So this is an ideal and best case for resuscitation, dry drowning. Then the immersion syndrome. This is also called as vagal inhibition. This is a rare condition which results from sudden impact of very cold water to the body and causing vagal inhibition. It leads to sudden cardiac arrest and instant death. That just by touching the feet to the cold water or any part of the cold water, there is sudden fright or fear which causes the vagal excitation and cardiac standstill will occur. And vagal inhibition can also occur from falling or diving into very cold water with feet striking first to the water or in duck driving that is the hand and the head entering into the water first. And this may also occur due to horizontal fall of the body into water, which results in a blow on the abdomen and which, which also excites any trigger zone, the solar plexus in the epigastrium and which will lead to vagal inhibition and cardiac stand still. There is instantaneous loss of consciousness and death will occur in a few minutes. And there are no signs of drowning on the body. Then the third is the submersion of unconscious. This occur if the victim is an epileptic or a patient of ischemic heart disease deep drunk of alcohol or suffered head injury during the fall into the water, then such event occurs. And there may be some other medical disease leading to sudden loss of, un sudden loss of consciousness. That person in these condition is already unconscious before entering into the water or falling into the water. And complete picture of drowning will not be seen in them. That is the ballooning of the lungs and the formation of fine froth, which are the pathognomonic signs of the drowning. They will not be there. 
the near drowning or secondary drowning syndrome. This is due to infection from the contaminated inhaled water. The victim initially has been rescued from water. Apparently responds to initial resuscitative measures and then suddenly deteriorates. And it is because of anoxia, exhausted heart, cerebral edema, they also will lead to the cause of death. And plus there will be electrolyte imbalance because of the inhalation of water. And the person will later on develop respiratory distress, hypotension, that is fall in the blood pressure and cardiac arrhythmias due to electrolyte imbalance. And this is known as near drowning or secondary drowning syndrome. This is necessary so to keep the person who are rescued. So keep all such cases under observation in hospital for at least 24 hours. Because during this period, the person develops pulmonary edema or respiratory pneumonia. So summary of this lecture, which I, we have discussed now is, we have learned about drowning. And after this lecture, we are now able to understand the introduction of drowning, the definition and its classification. And classification most important is the typical, which is called as wet drowning and atypical, which are of four types, dry drowning, immersion syndrome, submersion of unconscious and near drowning. So we have learned after this lecture, all the atypical types of drowning in detail. Thank you very much. So this is all about the lecture number 13. Now we'll be discussing the lecture number 14, continuing with the topic of drowning. Take care, Allah Hafiz.